Rookie goalie Jeremy Swayman was not at his best in Wednesday night's loss to the Philadelphia Flyers, and he knows it. He's going to learn, and he's going to try and get better from the experience. We're going to talk about that and more from last night's loss to the Flyers here on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Let's get into it, shall we? Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. I want to thank you for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms, so please do hit that subscribe button. Each new episode will be automatically added to your feed for you to download, listen, and enjoy. Uh, We're also on YouTube, and you can uh, subscribe there and get each new episode uh, in video form as well. Live look into my living room slash dining room slash home office. Uh, If you are on Twitter, the podcast can be found at LockedNHLBruins, the same on Instagram, actually. And you can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets, at Ian C. McLaren. Now, I am a lifelong Bruins fan. I've been watching this team since the Cam Neely Ray Bork era. Seen some lows, seen some highs. And uh, last night was disappointing to be sure, but it is only the second game of the season and there's lots ahead for the Boston Bruins. So try to trying to keep it in perspective here this morning. Now, the big story was uh, the yeah relatively poor play of rookie goalie Jeremy Swayman. Let's keep in mind, this was only his 12th career NHL start. Uh, he has a record of 8-4-0 and for his career, a 9-35 save percentage. Uh, but last night, certainly not his best. He allowed uh, three goals. More than three goals, sorry, for the first time in his career, including two in the third period, one from Cam Atkinson just 58 seconds into the final frame, and another from Travis Konechny with 8.43 remaining. That sealed things for the Flyers. Overall, 19 saves on 24 shots against. Uh, The Flyers had 25 shots total, with the final shot being an empty net goal to give them the 6-3 advantage. Head coach Bruce Cassidy said, you know, Jeremy Swayman is not going to be perfect every night. Clearly he wasn't tonight. Not his best. Needed some saves there when we broke down, and that's it. He just didn't give us saves when we needed them. Our breakdowns were bad in front of him. Wasn't a lot of quantity, but high quality. So basically what Bruce Cassidy is saying there, the Bruins – Clearly didn't play very well in front of Jeremy Swayman. Uh, A lot of breakdowns, a lot of turnovers, some odd man rushes the other way. Uh, But if Swayman had stepped up and made one more save, two more saves, that could have given the Bruins uh, some life and, you know, able to claw all the way back. They did fall uh, into a 3-1 deficit that was erased heading into the third period. Taylor Hall, Brad Marchand scored in the second to tie things up, heading into the final frame. Uh, But again, Atkinson and Konechny uh, tallied there in the third to give the Flyers the lead back, which they would not relinquish. Swayman, to his credit, said he was accountable for what happened, and he's going to use the setback as a learning experience. He said the team played great, great comeback in the second just wanted to do my job better and give us a chance to win. It stings right now. Glad I got it out of the way early. A lot to learn from and going to move forward. He's being a bit generous there in terms of the team playing great in front of him. I'm not sure that's uh, the case. And uh, again, 
while Cassidy acknowledged Swayman was not at his best, he also, uh, you know, discussed turnovers and breakdowns that preceded uh, some of these goals. He said, it's losing hockey is what it is. That's how you lose games. You do dumb things and good teams come back at you and they finish. And that's what happened. Uh, on the Flyers' fourth goal, in particular, the game-winning goal, uh, Mike Riley attempted a rush through the middle of the ice, had a pass uh, picked off at the Philadelphia blue line. The Flyers pounced, went the other way, converted on an odd man rush to take a 4-3 lead just 58 seconds into the third period. And again, uh, the Bruins had clawed back, tied the game, heading into the third, and then less than a minute into the final frame, you're giving up a goal. That's uh, very deflating. Uh, Riley said he feels like he would make that play most of the time. Uh, the guy got a good stick on it. He jumped. If he would have held on to it for one second more, would have had him caught on his feet. Uh, but he didn't think it was too risky. Just didn't make the play. Uh, on another down note from this one, Nick Felino left the game in the second with an upper body injury and did not return. Uh, Bruce Cassidy said following the game that Felino pulled something and that he would be reevaluated re here on Thursday. Hopefully nothing serious, uh, but he wasn't able to return. So that is never a good sign. Uh, so hopefully Nick Felino is okay. I said uh, on Twitter last night that if he is not able to play um, tomorrow night's game in Buffalo, Perhaps we'll see Jack Stanika recalled uh, or maybe um, Anton Bleed will come into the lineup for, um, <clears throat> for an injured Felino. Before we get to some other bits from this game, a quick word about Bet Online. They are back and better than ever. They have a new web interface for the start of the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before your number one spot for all basketball and football action this season sign up today and receive a 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit by using promo code locked on again they have you covered for all the major sports nhl boxing ufc your favorite casino games as well take advantage of all the amazing offers they have it's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts I want to thank you again for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen every day. We had a great uh, download day yesterday. Uh, people are obviously very interested in this team and want to talk more and more about them. And uh, I thank you for being willing to listen to me ramble on about the, about the Boston Bruins. And uh, again, we're free and available on all podcast platforms and also on YouTube. So please subscribe on your podcast app, and uh, on your YouTube app as well. Some other uh, bits from last night's game. Interesting to see that Bruce Cassidy made a switch to his defensive pairings before the game, opting to start Matt Grizzlick alongside Charlie McAvoy and shifting Derek Forbort down to the third pair to play with Connor Clifton. I thought Forbort pretty shaky in this one. I remember there was a turnover like right in front of the net that the Flyers didn't convert on. That was a rare uh, miss for them off, off a turnover. Uh, not super, I guess, enthused about his game so far, but again, it's only two games, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, I guess. And clearly Don Sweeney saw something in him that he thought would complement the defensive core. Uh, Connor Clifton as well hasn't really impressed me so far. Uh, but we'll see if those two can find some chemistry. Um, again, the right side, very thin when it comes to depth. And uh, behind McAvoy and Carlo, uh, that's something that Don Sweeney will probably address at some point prior to the trade deadline. Uh, Cassidy said Grizz and Charlie, he thought, were their most effective pair. Well, yes, that's going to happen because... They're clearly the team's top two defensemen, and they are a great top pair. Uh, part of the thinking throughout the year will be how is the matchup for Grizzly, Cassidy said. Is it a big body line? Konechny, Giroux, 
not big guys. So that was a bit of the thinking there. Forbort and Clifton have played together at times. So they're going to do that uh, from time to time. Move Grizzly down, up, uh, Forbort up and down to try to, yeah, mix things up. And it'll be based primarily on uh, size matchups, I guess. Grizzly will jump up with McAvoy if it's a bit of a smaller matchup. Uh, speaking of McAvoy, he recorded two assists, giving him 100 helpers for his career. Uh, the first assist was unbelievable. A beautiful outlet pass through the neutral zone to Taylor Hall, who uh, knew he had a breakaway, tapping his stick, calling for it. He broke in all alone on former Bruin Martin Jones, finished with a beautiful top shelf bar down uh goal over Jones's glove to pull the Bruins within a goal at 838 of the second period. Brad Marchand notched his third goal in two games uh, when he tied the game at three with about a minute to go in the second period. Uh, David Posternak recorded the assist, his first point of the season. The other Bruins goal was scored by Carson Kuhlman. Uh, never fails that I tweet something about Kuhlman and then he responds with a goal. Uh, last season, I said, I don't remember him doing anything memorable. And then he scored right away. Last night, I tweeted that uh, he had an attempt and didn't hit the net. And then lo and behold, he scores later in the first period uh, on a great forechecking effort by the fourth line with Trent Frederick and Thomas Nozick. Very impressed by Nozick's play last night. I think he's a pretty perfect fourth line center. And uh, Bruce Cassidy said at the end of the day, they've talked about how they have success against the Flyers in pockets when they got behind them for checking and when they had numbers back, which they did. And the fourth line really stepped up and showed that there had to play behind them. And they did created some turnovers, got back in the game, good for check second effort. So, uh, you know, credit to the fourth line for creating some offense there, uh, really doing their job well in uh, in that one for sure. And uh, again, Carson Kuhlman, you know, I, I maybe am a bit too hard on him, but I'd like to see that more consistently. And uh, yeah, I think if he can chip in like five to 10 goals, uh, that would be perfect. Like I said, the Bruins uh, outshot the Flyers 40 to 25. They were led in shots on goal by uh, Craig Smith, who had seven on the night. He failed to uh, score, but a great shooting effort for him, at least. Pasternak with five. Uh, Carson Kuhlman had four. Bergeron with three. Uh, from the back end, Derek Forbord actually had four shots on goal. Um, so the Bruins, yeah, maybe deserved a better fate in this one. But some uh, breakdowns really, really did them in. Just looking at the uh, natural statric page here, the Bruins pretty much dominated when it comes to shot attempts in all situations. They led 72-48 for a 60% to 40% advantage. Shots, 40-25, like I said. They had more scoring chances. Uh, they had more high danger chances. The Bruins had 16 high danger chances in all situations compared to five for the Flyers. And expected goals, the Bruins led in this one as well, 3.17 uh, to 2.21. So altogether, they played better than the Flyers, but they were done in by the turnovers and uh, by Jeremy Swayman. Uh, not being able to make those saves off those miscues. So overall, if the Bruins continue to play like they did last night, they should be okay. Uh, again, they'll be back in action on Friday evening in Buffalo, where Linus Allmark will make his first start of the season. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres coming into this game. Uh, do they play tonight? They are undefeated at the moment, and uh, they will be... Uh, let's just see if they're playing tonight. They are not playing tonight. So, yeah, it'll be uh, their first uh, crack at the Bruins this season, and it would really be a boost to them, obviously, if they can beat their old goaltender at home. They're 3-0 at the moment. Uh, but we'll talk more about this Buffalo Sabres 
on uh, tomorrow's podcast as we preview tomorrow night's game. The Bruins now one and one, two points and uh, four points back of the Panthers and Sabres with uh, with the game in hand. So very early, uh, but the Bruins overall played well. Probably deserved a better fate, but again, we're done in by these turnovers and uh, by some untimely and uncharacteristic uh, flappability on the part of uh, Jeremy Swayman. Rock Auto is the best place to get all your auto parts needs filled. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's almost impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. You don't have to go there, get intimidating questions, and wait while the person behind the desk orders only the parts that they carry. You can go on your uh, mobile device or go home, look on your computer, and see all the parts available for your car or truck at Rock Auto. They're a family-owned business. They've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Their prices are always reliably low for every customer, and it's not only a do-it-yourself situation. I've purchased parts, taken them to my mechanic, and they were able to install it for me. They have everything you need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website and find the solution to your auto parts needs. Again, go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? So they know we sent you. Amazing selection. Reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. Let's take a look at some news and notes from around the NHL as we do on a daily basis. I'm kind of kicking myself at the moment because... I don't know if anybody cares about fantasy hockey out there, but I am in a pretty competitive uh, keeper league that is salary cap based. And over the last couple of weeks, I had been offered a trade involving Jordan Bennington and some high prospects in exchange for Connor Hellebuck. I balked at that deal uh, because Connor Hellebuck, I still believe, is one of the best goalies in hockey, if not yeah, top two behind Andre Vasilevsky. He's off to a rough start. And Jordan Bennington last night made 42 saves to lead the Blues over the Vegas Golden Knights for a 3-1 victory. Another reason I didn't want to trade for Bennington is just because he's Jordan Bennington. And we all know what he did to the Bruins. And he's just not a, a super likable guy. So I'm still having faith in Hellebuck. But uh, every time I see the Blues win... Uh, and Biddington makes a lot of saves. I, uh, I cry a little inside, to be honest. Uh, Winnipeg Jets are dealing with possible COVID outbreak. Captain Blake Wheeler tested positive and was sent into isolation on Tuesday. He is symptomatic. Uh, they didn't, uh, the Jets, comment on the report, uh, but they're expected to provide an update on Thursday. The report being from Frank Saravelli of Daily Faceoff that uh, there were some tests that were positive among the rest of the team. I think those were false positives, and they should be cleared to play tonight against the Ducks. Uh, they also sent highly touted prospect Colt Perfetti to the Manitoba Moose, another guy that I have in my uh, in my keeper league, if anybody cares. Now, tonight, there will be a big game to watch uh, with our Bruins off. Uh, I'll be keeping an eye certainly on the Hurricanes and Canadians, not just to see if the Canadians will lose and drop to 0-5 and 0 on the season, but also because Jesperi Kotkaniemi making his return to Montreal the first time since signing that one-year $6.1 million offer sheet. Uh, Kotkaniemi says he has no hard feelings, nothing but good memories of his time with the Habs, uh, but we'll see if uh, Habs fans uh, feel feel the same elsewhere around the nhl uh let's take a look at some rumors du jour uh speaking of canadians mark bergevin he's in the final year of his contract and there's some question as to whether he'll be back as general manager um and or whether he'll move on there are some rumblings out there that uh owner jeff molson has already tabbed patrick Waugh as a potential replacement for Mark Bergevin. That would be uh, very entertaining to see for sure. And uh, 
one of the players available on the trade market apparently is well not apparently it's pretty public right now uh Vitaly Kravtsov with the New York Rangers. Now there are as many as 15 teams inquiring about him. I don't know if the Bruins are among them, but the Flames, Jets, and Senators certainly are, according to Nick Kiprios of Sportsnet. Uh, another guy, of course, is Dylan Strom. Larry Brooks of the New York Post floated a potential Strom for Kravtsov trade, reuniting uh, Dylan with his brother Ryan. Uh, but the Blackhawks, not really doing any favors for Strom by sidelining him, making him a healthy scratch. It's going to be hard for his trade value to reach any height if he's not playing at all. And another guy that I have on that keeper league team, and it's frustrating to see that $3 million not being put to use. Uh, the Anaheim Ducks, Senators, also reportedly in on Strom. Um, could be a guy the Bruins look to if – if, uh, you know, Nick Foligno is sidelined for any length of time, but the more uh, realistic option would be recalling Jack Stadnika. I think that's pretty much it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. I hope you're all having a great week. Uh, show recommendation for you. I think I mentioned on the podcast before, but Made on Netflix is very good. Probably one of the best Netflix productions I've ever watched about a single mom trying to uh, free herself from a uh, emotionally abusive uh, situation. Uh, some heavy content, but uh, very good. And, and Margaret Qualley uh, very much carried the show. A uh, big fan of hers from Leftovers, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, what else are we watching? Watched uh, the latest episode of Impeachment, the uh, Bill Clinton uh, American crime story last night. That's very entertaining as well. And uh, trying to find some time to watch the Only Murders in the Building finale, which I uh, very much enjoyed. Uh, and a couple episodes of Reservation Dogs I'm a bit behind on. Anyways, we will be back tomorrow, I believe, with This Week in Hockey with Mayor, as well as a preview of tomorrow night's game against the Buffalo Sabres. Again, thank you so much for making Locked On Boston Bruins your first listen of the day. If you're looking for a second listen, I recommend the Locked On Fantasy Hockey podcast hosted by Scott Cullen. Uh, both are available on your podcast platform. And uh, yeah, it would be cool if you uh, supported that podcast as well. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. If you need anything, have any questions, feel free to hit me up at Locked NHL Bruins or at Ian C. McLaren. And we will be back tomorrow with another episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Take care, friends.